Welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. I'm meteorologist Peter Chant coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Thursday, July 7th, 2022. We try to do this each day through a unique partnership with Alaska Public Media. One thing I do want to pass along, we have changed the phone number for the recorded phone forecast, if that's how you get your, some of your weather information. It is now 1-855-937-4972. Please make a, a note of that change. And if you like additional weather information on top of this broadcast, you can always go to weather.gov. It is the National Weather Service's homepage. It's our online presence. It'll bring you to a map of the continental U.S. with Alaska and Hawaii in the lower left. It is an interactive point and click map where you can get forecasts, watches, warnings, advisories, and so much more for anywhere in the country. You can check up on the weather uh, at a friend or relative's house uh, far away. And looking at the map this afternoon, we have excessive heat warnings and heat advisories covering much of the southern U.S., especially centered there on the middle uh, and lower Mississippi Valley on over toward the Carolinas. Further north and west, uh, there is a severe thunderstorm watch and flood watches for a large chunk of Montana. But here in Alaska, we continue to have red flag warnings due to uh, thunderstorms and the threat for uh, additional fire starts from lightning in uh, central and east central areas of the interior, along with dense smoke advisories till midnight tonight, this Thursday night. And uh, red flag warnings remain in effect for the Copper River Basin, not so much for thunderstorms, but simply the very warm, very dry and breezy conditions have uh, elevated the fire danger to critical uh, levels, so it would be very easy for a fire to start and spread there. Overall, though, we are seeing cooler and wetter weather spread from the southwest part of the state now into the western Gulf, even up into south central areas. Uh, Anchorage has managed to pick up uh, at least 12 hundredths of an inch of rain through mid-afternoon this Thursday. First time in a long time, it's been a very dry stretch here, especially the month of June and early July, and overall it's looking like we're going to gradually turn cooler with some occasionally wet weather here across much of the state as we head through mid-July and a bit beyond that. But here again, checking uh, the current advisories, red flag warnings there, Tanana, Fairbanks, up to Fort Yukon, Eagle, south through the 40-mile Gold Country, Northway. And then the other uh, red flag warning for the Copper River Basin that includes uh, around Glen Ellen and Colcana. Uh, those areas there are very dry with warm temperatures. Now, area in yellow is a dense smoke advisory kind of on the west arm of the Alaska Range extending toward McGrath. There are some 240 wildfires now burning across the state, so you can imagine the smoke in the interior is pretty significant, especially in the vicinity of those active fires. One other thing, too, down in the panhandle, there is a flood advisory, flood advisory for the glacier dammed lake outburst from Suicide Basin on the Mendenhall Lake and River. They are expecting that outburst to cause a rise in stream level nine feet, which is minor flooding by Friday morning. There is some uncertainty as to how much volume of water is gonna come out of that uh, glacial lake uh, burst, but nevertheless, uh, be aware of that uh, if you're in the vicinity there of uh, Mendenhall Lake and River uh, near Juneau. And as far as uh, taking a look at some of the sky cams across the state, Wiley Post there in the far northwest, just uh, south of Barrow, uh, fog 42 degrees, Dillingham in the southwest, cloudy skies, some scattered light showers, 55 degrees, much of the southwest, especially coastal areas there have been cloudy, cooler, and wet. Uh, that moisture is working up along the western gulf, Kodiak light rain showers and fog 54, and Seward light showers 56 degrees, and in fact areas like Seward on up through Whittier, the east side of the Kenai Peninsula, could see an inch or two of rainfall uh, now through uh, early Saturday as this system will be rather wet for them getting that uh, direct southeast flow coming in off of the Gulf. But checking the latest information from the Alaska Interagency Coordination Center for the Wildland Fires, there are 240 active fires now across the state and we are working on 
approaching two and a half million of acres burned so far this fire season for 2022. Uh, the fire weather update provided by uh, the AICC Predictive Services. They're saying these uh, very warm, dry, and breezy conditions remains uh, through this evening here in the Copper River uh, Basin of the uh, Southeast Interior. Smoke will continue to be a problem, Central and Eastern Interior, that's going to uh, impact public health and any type of uh, visibly dependent operations, especially general aviation. Alaska now has 14 staffed fires. Five are major complexes with multiple, uh, you know, staff on each of those fires. Over 1,800 firefighters have been deployed statewide, and it looks like warm temperatures will continue across the interior through the weekend with the threat of isolated to scattered thunderstorms that could initiate additional fire starts because of these extremely dry fuels. And there's a check here what the fire danger looks like based on the spruce adjective here for uh, Thursday or Friday rather, uh, July 8th. Still areas of extreme there just north of the Alaska Range up through the Tanana Valley and also the Copper River Basin, though the winds there around the Copper River uh, should not be as strong and temperatures a bit cooler tomorrow. Checking the satellite imagery, we can see that curl in the clouds there moving across the Alaska Peninsula and up toward Kodiak Island. That's the main low in this whole thing. Big ridge of upper high pressure continues there in northwest Canada along the Canadian Arctic coast. And uh, we expect that moisture to ride northeastward uh, from the low there uh, up along the western gulf, eventually spreading up into the panhandle as we go into the uh, early weekend. So here's a look at the current uh, low pressure there just south of Kodiak Island. We have a couple other areas of weaker low pressure, lower Yukon Valley, and then up uh, thermal uh, low in trough there along the Alcan border with scattered showers and thunderstorms wanting to fire. That potential will continue even into the overnight. Some moderate to briefly heavy rain setting up there on the east side of the Kenai and around Seward and on up toward uh, Prince William Sound, at least the west end there around Whittier. And then as we go into Friday, we expect uh, more showers and storms and areas of smoke across the interior up along the Brooks Range. Could even be an isolated storm pop up there near the uh, eastern Arctic coast. The occluded front will continue to work its way north and northeastward up through the Gulf, bringing with it and pushing the rain up into areas along much of the Gulf Coast and into the Panhandle. And low temperatures Friday morning should generally be in the lower 50s across the Panhandle. We're going to see readings uh, maybe down in the upper 40s there, Copper River Basin at Glen Allen. 55 or so uh, with some cloud cover there in uh, Anchorage and temperatures generally confined to the uh, upper 50s to maybe lower 60s in the Panhandle on Friday. Still some 70s there as you get up toward Telkeetna, Glen Allen, uh, on over toward McGrath, but with the cloud cover and some light showers, temperatures should be confined uh, to uh, 60s, uh, upper 50s to near 60 along coastal areas of the Gulf. Saturday morning lows, lower 50s Panhandle and generally around or a bit above 50. They are in through south central areas and the warmest temperatures again off to the north, Talkeetna, Glen Allen, on over to the west side of the Alaska Range, could even squeak out near 80 there at McGrath. Along the uh, Yukon River, lows tonight will generally be in the lower to mid 50s, warmest readings, Fairbanks, Yukon Flats uh, could have lows there uh, around 57, 58. Upper 30s, near 40 along the Arctic coast. Again, some 80 showing up again for Friday afternoon, especially the Yukon Flats around Fairbanks and along the Elkan border. Saturday morning, uh, lows again along the Yukon River, generally in the 50s. Some upper 40s to near 50 there along the Arctic coast, 40s elsewhere along, especially the northwest coast down through the Bering Strait. And actually some warmer temperatures are gonna kind of back up toward the west by Saturday afternoon. So there'll be additional uh, chances of some scattered showers and storms redeveloping a little further westward as we get into Saturday and probably Sunday as some temperatures again could get back up into the 80s, especially as you get further west of uh, Tanana toward Galena and Ruby. Across the southwest, lows generally in the 40s, a few lower 50s possible there in the interior. High temperatures Friday afternoon, warmest as you creep up the Yukon and upper Kuskokwim. Basins temperatures there will be uh, as warm as 77, like at McGrath. Uh, still, those 67 at Imanak and uh, further out across the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians, we expect uh, highs in the lower 50s. Saturday morning lows should generally be above 50 across the southwest interior, upper 40s to near 50 along the outer southwest coast and down through 
the peninsula and uh, the Aleutians and then temperatures Saturday afternoon are going to be uh, warmer as you creep up through the middle and upper parts of uh, the Kuskokwim and Yukon River basins but could start to see some 60s again showing up there along uh, the southwest coast there in the lower YK deltas with generally 50s extending out along the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. 6 to 10 day outlook July 13th through the 17th some cooler temperatures back there through the west and northwest maybe near to a bit above normal Cook Inlet down toward Kodiak Island a bit cooler certainly in the panhandle than what we saw here over the 4th of July weekend and as we get toward the middle of the month we're anticipating a little stronger signature for below normal temperatures there middle Yukon Valley toward the west central portions of the state near to slightly above normal temperatures from the eastern Kenai down toward Kodiak and overall precipitation is expected average near normal along the west and southwest coast and a little bit above average through the much of the uh, interior and eastern mainland as well as portions of the panhandle. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Well, it's now time for your aviation weather. If you have a flight planned early this weekend, Friday or Saturday, the main weather feature will be low pressure in the western gulf, just east-southeast of Kodiak Island for Friday morning. There's going to be an occluded front arcing northeastward that will lift up to along the gulf coast and the outer uh, panhandle coast here uh, as we go through the day on Saturday. And with it, there will be some cloudiness and areas of uh, rain that have and overall going to just bring some cooler temperatures to the area compared to the heat in the panhandle uh, over the 4th of July weekend in the interior. Isolated thunderstorms will be possible uh, Friday morning uh, north of the Alaska Range, even uh, along the far eastern Arctic coast, not out of the question as the smoke persists. And Friday afternoon, look for redevelopment of isolated to pockets of scattered thunderstorms there late afternoon and evening hours across the interior and especially along south of the spine of the Brooks Range. Otherwise, fairly widespread IFR conditions anticipated out over the open waters of the Gulf. Uh, some moderate rains uh, along the eastern Kenai and up into parts of Prince William Sound around Whittier down through Seward. And then for Saturday morning, still some areas of smoke uh, there from the extensive wildfires that are occurring there, the active wildfires through the mainland. Uh, IFR conditions continuing uh, offshore there through the Gulf. And then areas along the Arctic coast will continue to see some low cloudiness and fog down through the Bering Strait and much of the Bering Sea and the Aleutian chain uh, seeing some lower cloudiness and areas of fog at times. Saturday afternoon could see redevelopment of some isolated to scattered thunderstorms from the east central interior along the Yukon River all the way back uh, to south of Norton Sound as the ridge of high pressure aloft kind of reorients with the low in the Gulf. So Anatuvik Pash may see IFR conditions in the morning give way to VFR an isolated thunderstorm could redevelop uh, later afternoon evening with smoke as you fly further south especially through the Yukon Valley same thing at Attigan Pass IFR conditions becoming VFR with perhaps an isolated storm developing in vicinity of the pass. Lake Clark and Merrill should generally see MVFR conditions throughout the day on Friday. More in the way of some rain as you go out over Cook Inlet. Rainy Pass, MVFR becoming VFR. And then as we round uh, the central Alaska range, MVFR conditions early at Windy Pass becoming VFR with smoke, areas of smoke as you uh, fly further north. Isabel VFR conditions, but an isolated storm could pop up along with areas of smoke uh, north of the north uh, entrance. Uh, and then Metasta Pass VFR conditions are anticipated, though the morning could see a period of MVFR from the south entrance southward. And Tanita Pass, generally MVFR conditions giving away to VFR. And Portage Pass will kind of uh, be a split, generally MVFR conditions, but IFR becoming MVFR there at the east entrance, Prince William Sound, and then further west, VFR conditions uh, becoming MVFR there at the west entrance. Chilkoot and White should generally see MVFR conditions during the day on Friday. Freezing levels are highest up along the Canadian Arctic coast, uh, around and just over 12,000 feet associated with that warm dome, the high pressure. Uh, further south and west, you can see the pool of colder air aloft associated with the low that's going to be just uh, south-southwest of Kodiak Island with freezing levels there at or below 6,000 feet. And there is the potential for uh, some considerable moderate icing there at the entrance of Cook Inlet, also Lake Eliamna along uh, the far southern portion of the Alaska Range. 
and along uh, the mountains there of the eastern Kenai on up into uh, Prince William Sound. But generally, uh, any type of icing would be uh, between 10,000 and a flight level of 18,000 feet. Jet stream level winds at 30,000 feet, the backside of low pressure there through the central bearing upwards to 120 knot northeasterly to northerly uh, wind max also there along uh, the North Pacific south of the low 105 uh, wind max out of the west. At 700 millibars, 9,000 feet, we have winds upwards of anywhere from 45 to 60 knots along the eastern Kenai uh, and into the far south, southwestern end of the Alaska range. And bringing it down to 3,000 feet, we see the low pressure there south side of Kodiak Island with winds of 35 upwards to 50 knots. Uh, from the southeast, uh, from the north central gulf across the Kenai Peninsula, back uh, through Lake Iliamna and uh, Bristol Bay. And that is where we expect the potential for turbulence, uh, moderate turbulence, surface to 6,000 feet over those areas of the northwest gulf, southwest back into the lower portion of the Alaska Peninsula, and then finally way out in through the western Aleutian chain. <laughs> Hi there, equestrian star watchers. Trace here. Pegasus was the winged horse of ancient mythology. Let's find him. Hit the darkness around 2 a.m. any night this week and look east. You should see the bright dot of Jupiter right in front of you, and then up from Jupiter, you'll see a square of the stars Shia, Markab, Al Janib, and Alpha Rats. They form the horse's body, known as the Great Square of Pegasus. Pegasus was told to come from the blood spilt as Perseus decapitated Medusa, and later helped the hero Bellerophon defeat the monster Chimera. Within the constellation are several galaxies, and with binoculars, you can even spot M15, a globular cluster, gravitationally bound ball of stars. Plus, Pegasus's Helvetios was the first sun-like star found to have a planet orbiting it. Still out there helping us slay, Pegasus. Good horsey. Keep looking up. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and we have a special guest in the studio today. We welcome Amanda Turborg of the Aviation Weather Center. Thanks for joining us, Amanda. Yeah, thank you for having me. Amanda's flown in all the way from Kansas City, and uh, for those of you that don't know, the Aviation Weather Center serves the lower 48 uh, for aviators, just as the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit here in Anchorage serves all of Alaska. So I kind of wonder, what's the Aviation Weather Center in Kansas City doing to help out Alaska, Amanda? Yeah, you know, we do a lot of collaboration work with our sister station up here. Uh, lately, we've been doing a lot of work, especially in the satellite meteorology. Okay. Um, in particular, we have been looking at ways to identify, better identify icing conditions in oh. clouds, um, which is a big deal up here because Very. as I've come to find out, even though I'm not from here, um, you guys have a lot of pilots here. We have a lot of pilots. In yeah. fact, it's, when you say you can't get there from here, that's how you get there. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so uh, with icing potential then, uh, what, what's Kansas City working on? Uh, well, we are working on something that will help us, again, identify the icing in the clouds. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want ice on your aircraft. No. Uh, not only does it add a whole bunch of extra weight to your airframe when it, it, it attaches to mm -hmm. the wings and the nose cone, but it can also mess with your aerodynamics. Right. Um, and in the most serious conditions, that can mess with it enough that you can actually crash. Yeah, it changes the shape of the wing and that makes it sometimes impossible to fly, right? It does, yeah. So mm -hmm. we want to figure out a way to forecast, better forecast for that. Makes sense. Now this particular image is over Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, the colors here are a little goofy. It doesn't look like your run-of-the-mill satellite image. Okay. Um, but the red is where you have liquid clouds and the blue is ice. But again, it really doesn't tell you a lot where you have icing conditions mm -hmm. in that cloud. Uh, because in those clouds there's little droplets and they're cold and they're actually below freezing but they're still liquid and wow. that makes them sticky. Okay. So when an aircraft flies through there, um, those droplets are sticking to the aircraft and it can mm -hmm. happen amazingly fast. Right. And so that's what we're trying to find. Um, and there is a product called the Aircraft Flight Icing Threat that mm -hmm. does this. Um, and it's basically looking at the temperature of the cloud, mm -hmm. and it's also looking at the size of the droplets to okay. identify a probability and intensity of those icing conditions. Okay. Um, and if you flip to the next image, mm -hmm. um, this is a case from Juneau, Alaska, um, where this probably wouldn't have been the, most, the best day to fly around Juneau. Okay. Um, now there was an area of moisture that pushed south from the southwest mm -hmm. up along the coast that pushed in a stratus layer. And in the stratus layer there was a lot of those super cool liquid drops or a lot of stickiness. Okay. Um, and 
so the flight icing threat was able to, in the pinks and the reds there, was mm -hmm. able to identify where that icing was. Um, now this is really cool, you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to identify that sure. there is, you know, of course, caveats to every product. Um, much as we wish it would, it would happen, sun doesn't shine all the time, unless, I guess, if you live in northern Alaska during the summertime. Right, right. Um, but we need that sun to be able to bounce off those clouds and to be able to see where those super cool drops are. Okay, so it's a daytime only tool. It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right now, of mm -hmm. course, you know, we're in the era, era of advanced satellite technology, and there right. is a satellite that can actually use moonlight to see clouds. Yes. And so sometime in the future, we hope to be able to do that. Okay. Um, another thing that is a bit of a challenge is multiple layers of clouds. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only see so far through a thick cloud. Okay. And if it's thick enough, sometimes you can't see a layer of icing that's below there. Right. Um, but even besides those caveats, it does, this product has a lot of potential to help out Alaskan aviators here. Well, it sounds like a really big deal and, and something that uh, forecasters at the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit could use probably on a daily basis and especially in the middle of a really big storm. Yeah, I would think so. Do you have a really good success story in the lower 48 using this tool? Um, you know, this is a, it's a fairly new product and so we're still evaluating it, but yeah, we've had a, a lot of cases um, where we have seen that it does, it does tend to capture those icing conditions. Okay, very good. Well, Amanda, thanks so much for sharing some of the very interesting satellite imagery and the tools that you're using there at the Aviation Weather Center in Kansas City with us here in Alaska. Uh, people can probably find some of this information online, right? Yeah, um, here is a website here. It's a page from NASA Langley, and they have mm -hmm. this imagery as well as a bunch of other satellite imagery that you can take a look at. Okay, great. And I'm sure our friends at the Alaska Aviation Weather Center and the unit will be uh, using that in the, in the coming months there uh, with your training and your help there to learn more about uh, that tool to help Alaska aviators any day of the year. That's wonderful stuff. So thanks again for joining us, Amanda, and uh, we welcome you to uh, view any of our Alaska weather facts on YouTube anytime at the address below, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Let's take a look now at the marine weather and starting with the sea ice edge, uh, much of the lower Chukchi Sea through the Bering Strait, we have plenty of open water. The pack ice as we go further north will continue to slowly melt off. We still have some ice lingering there just offshore along areas of the Arctic coast. But again, as we uh, dive through the midsummer, that will continue to melt. In through the uh, southeastern panhandle, inner channels, winds will be southeast to south, 10 to 15 knots, waves running two to three feet. The outer coast uh, southeasterly winds generally 20 knots, waves 5 to 6 feet, though a bit higher, 8 to 10 feet as you get west of Yakutat. And then for Saturday, winds continue southeast to south, 15 to 20 knots for the inner channels uh, with some scattered rain showers and temperature, or I should say, waves 3 to 4 feet. Outer coast uh, southeast to east winds 20 to 25 knots and waves anywhere from 6 to as high as 8 feet. For the Northwestern Gulf, off the Kenai, those areas south of Cordova, we have uh, easterly gales to 35 knots, waves as high as 14 to 16 feet in the open waters, and generally uh, northeasterly 30 to 35 knots running down the length of uh, Cook Inlet with 12-foot waves at the entrance. For Saturday, winds do come down generally north-northeasterly across the region, 15 knots in uh, Prince William Sound, two-foot waves. 15 to 20 knots with uh, two to five foot waves there at the mouth of uh, Cook Inlet and seven to eight feet off of the Kenai. Low pressure circulation Friday is centered near Kodiak Island. And you can see the counterclockwise circulation northeast winds to 30 knots, Shelikoff Strait, eight foot waves. Winds turn north to uh, westerly across the Alaska Peninsula around 20 knots. Wave seven to eight feet on the North Pacific side, four feet on the Bering side. And then on Saturday, uh, winds come down a bit further, uh, 25 knots northeast winds through Shelikoff Strait. Otherwise, northeast to northwest winds off the, the Pacific side with waves of five to six feet. North winds 15 knots with three to five foot waves from Bristol Bay down to North Cold Bay. What winds will generally be west 15 knots, the eastern Aleutians around Dutch Harbor on Friday. Uh, the central Aleutians variable winds 10 knots and westerly winds uh, back out west of Adak at 15 to 20 knots. For Saturday, look for west-northwest winds over the eastern Aleutians around 20 knots or so. Variable winds continue there and through the central Aleutians and then turn back to the southwest to west 15 knots west of Adak. 
and for the southeast bearing, especially in the vicinity of St. Paul, St. George, and St. Matthew, variable winds around 10 knots, waves two, three feet. Offshore winds there at the uh, lower Yukon Delta and uh, north winds five knots, variable there in Norton Sound with waves a foot or so. And for Saturday, we're looking at uh, winds to be northwesterly, 10 knots in Norton Sound waves a few feet. Southwest winds south of St. Lawrence Island to about uh, St. Matthew at 15 to 20 knots, waves three to as high as five feet around St. Matthew. And then north to northwest winds 15 knots there uh, east of St. Paul and St. George. Across the Chukchi Sea, winds will be out of the northeast to north around 10 knots, waves running a couple of feet. The Arctic coast winds will generally have a northerly component around 10 knots, but as I mentioned, there still is some ice there. And then for Saturday, uh, winds through the lower Chukchi Sea, north side of St. Lawrence, go from southwest to south around 15 knots, waves three feet. And look for north northeast winds generally uh, across the, the Arctic coast with still uh, some broken up ice there uh, offshore with uh, winds only five to 10 knots. Quick check of the surface weather map. We have low pressure uh, this uh, for Friday afternoon located right over the uh, central uh, areas of the Alaska Peninsula and uh, southwest there of uh, Kodiak Island. Some moderate to locally heavier rain uh, on the east side of the Kenai Peninsula around the Whittier and Seward. And then the interior thermal trough of low pressure with scattered storms and areas of smoke continuing. On Saturday, the thermal trough remains there, uh, may even bump a little further north there through the Yukon Valley with scattered showers and storms and areas of smoke. An occluded front will work its way further north and east, pushing more rain along coastal areas of the Gulf from uh, the Kenai and Kodiak Island all the way through the Panhandle, along with some cooler temperatures there across uh, the far southern parts of the state and the Gulf Coast region. So that wraps it up for our show on this Thursday. Thank you for watching and join me for one more here coming up on Friday evening. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.